folks, Jessica here. So, today we're going to be talking about Rise of the Beast. Now you might be thinking, you've already done a video on Rise of the Beast, and I have. But that was like a year ago? It's a while ago. And Rise of the Beast has changed significantly since then, so I figured this would be an updated guide to all the stuff you need to know about Rise of the Beast. Um, Rise of the Beast, uh, it's an event. It's a weird event because it's very integral to the part to progression, like getting stronger in Ram Blue. Um, it comes around every like month or two. Uh, I used to think it was a very strange event because like it was kind of important, but like mostly just because you got gold bars from it. And I kind of wish they would just. I I previously I wished that it would not be a rotating event, it would just be a part of the game that was always on. But they have added so much shit to it <laughs> that, that now it's so core to like getting stronger in the game that uh, it works as an event and it comes down around frequently enough that I'm fine with it. So, basic point of Rise of the Beast, get pendants. That's, that's, that hasn't changed. A thing that has changed is the cap used to be 30,000, now it's 100,000. And you get pendants by doing these beast battles. Um, there's this cardinal bonus that rotates every two hours, I think. Yeah, two hours. And during that time period, um, one of the beasts will have a symbol under it right there. And the, I have a hair in my mouth. What? Fucking random. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we'll have a symbol under its uh, under its portrait. Uh, that means you get bonus pendants for it during that hour. Also means um, when you charge up this crystal, you'll get that element's boss. So every time you do one of these things, uh, you get a little bit more um, energy for the crystal. And when it's fully charged, you get a big boss. And when you do a big boss, which is a 30-man raid, but you can, if you're decently strong, you can probably solo it. Um, you get a ton of crystals for that. That's all old news. Um, other old news, uh, you get gold bars from this. Primary source of gold bars from people, four people. If you do five of each of the, the beasts a day, you get one gold nugget. You need 10 nuggets initially for a gold bar, then 15, then I believe 20. So definitely all the nuggets will help. Uh, other reason to do it if you're a newer player, and this is, uh, the, again, I, I've gone over this, but uh, I figured I'd just give like, an expansive quick recap of it for people who haven't uh, been very familiar with Rise of the Beast, and then we'll get into the new stuff. Uh, these weapons, the Rayo Zukui, the Zan Wu Mace, Baihu Claw, Quinn Longspear, solid weapons for pretty much any like new to mid game player. Uh, the Ray of Zukui you can actually use in like a, a later game grid uh, if you're running like Agni or something. These, uh, the, the Liar, um, the Fang Staff and the Main Whip and the the Fist, the Zanru Fist, which aren't here because I already bought them. Uh, they you can get them, but they're very specific. Like for example, gah, I always forget the backing up there backs you all the way up. For example, the Liar boost attack for an ally in second position, and then boost attack on top of that. Very strong, but only ally in second position. Kind of weird. Very specific, and you take damage every turn. Uh, might be useful in like an enmity team uh, but li like I said these definitely take a lot more forethought to be useful whereas these the katana mace fist and spear um, they're just good in any er early to mid game grid and some late game grids these seals you use them to uh, make a golden seal uh, by combining four of them which is used to summon the bosses Quillen and Huang Long um, they have their own weapons. I'm not going to super get into those. They're kind of a more advanced topic, so if you have questions about those, I can do a different video for those. Um, but that's that. you need these seals in order to to make a gold beast seal. You need two gold beast seals to summon them. So these are worthwhile to get. These are also used to uncap a lot of these weapons. Uh, to These weapons come three-star uncapped to four-star uncap them. You'll need these seals. Uh, these seals get more expensive every time you buy one until the next Rise of the Beast. So I bought one of the Zukui seals, the fire seals, so now it's 15,000 instead of 10. Um, it will be 15,000 uh, until the next Rise of the Beast, or 20,000 if I buy another one. Uh, 
the next recipe still reset. So it's worthwhile to get all the seals uh, every recipe so you can. These random weapons, don't get the SR weapon ticket. Not really worth it. <laughs> I mean, you can if you really want some SR weapons, but I don't think it's worth it. Um, Septium Burner is, uh, is random weapon, increases drop rate. You have to use it as your main hand, so, you know, maybe, okay. Broadsword Earth, like, gives you defense, but those aren't really that great. Neptune Sphere, however, Neptune's Trident gives you rank point earnings, and the Silver, the Animoid Silver Lyre gives you XP earnings. Uh, these are worthwhile to put in your grid for when you do some XP stuff, like uh, Slime Blasting, for example. So these are worth getting one of, but you can get those through doing the battle badges. You get battle badges for doing each of the respective elements, and at the end, I believe... Yeah, at the end you get a weapon, or 100 badges in you get a weapon, so it's worthwhile to do the battle badges instead of buying those. And yeah. Also, apologies if I sound a little haggard, because I was doing, I, uh, I was trying to record this video live during a stream, and then I realized my audio was fucked up halfway through, I'm like, no, I've got to actually do it again, so this is the second time I've done this. Uh, let's see. So, new stuff. New exciting stuff. They added four new weapons. Um, God. Summer's something. It's a gun. It's a fire gun. I already bought it, so you can't see it here, but I'll show you in a second. Winter's Frost Nettle, Autumn's Transformation, Spring's Whisperings. Let's look at them all real quick because they are actually very, some of them are very exciting. The gun, here we go. Summer's Mirage. Um, this one is very good. It boosts um, fire attack, whatever, medium boost, not a huge boost, but it has sentence. It boosts fire charge attack damage and charge attack damage cap. That's huge. So I don't think fire has any access to sentence until now. So this is definitely worth getting for any power level grid. But this thing is really good. <laughs> really good. Um, you want to get it, and then you want to get a fire seal to five star uncap it, four star uncap it, and then level it up all the way. Because this thing is very good. I originally, originally thought it might be a good soldier weapon or gunslinger weapon, but it's not because it's five bullets instead of six. Uh, I'm going to do a video talking more about how bullets work later for Soldier and Gunslinger, because they're a little bit confusing. But just know that if you're looking for a weapon, you want six bullets. If you can, if the weapon doesn't have six bullets, it's gonna it's gonna cause you some issues. Uh, let's look at other weapons though. Fire, super good. That's a huge win for fire. Like I can't imagine not getting that weapon if you play fire. Um, Winter's Frost Nettle. This one's alright. Medium boost attack, all of them medium boost, and crit rate, that's pretty good. And then Enmity, small boost to attack based on how low your HP is. All these are good things. This is a very good weapon. However, Wind is very Oogie centric right now in terms of the meta builds. Very charge attack centric. If you are mid game and don't care so much about meta, then this is a very solid addition. And if the meta ever changes to a more auto attack kind of meta, um, this would be very strong but right now it's it's good but it doesn't work as well in the face of the meta but of all of them it's probably the second best autumn's transformation medium boost attack medium boost double attack rate <sighs> medium crit the crit's good the attack's good obviously double attack is like the least exciting thing you can put on a weapon for me double attack might as well just not even be there it just just so unexciting. Um, the reason why is double attack is really easy to get. It's really easy to cap double attack. So, um, generally speaking, I don't want double attack on my weapons. So this one's honestly mediocre. There's a lot better choices you can get for this slot, in my opinion. I mean, crit and medium attack, that's fine. But it's still less good than all of the other choices you have here. And I think unless you're like an earlier game player or mid-game player just looking to fill out your grid with decent weapons, and if you're an early game mid game player, this is a great weapon. I'm talking from like an end game perspective. Um, n not the best of them. Though I'd say, I, I will say I would I might use this thing over a Baihu Claw. Don't know. I have to think about that. And then this thing, the string bean. Like I was looking at this picture initially. I'm like, what the hell is this? Is this a string bean? Is it like? A little string bean dagger? 
Uh, but what it is, is it's a harp. <laughs> it's a very strange looking harp. Um, everything I said about the Earth Spear, but even more so here, boost medium, uh, medium boost attack, whatever, that's fine, all of them have that. Medium boost to HP and double attack. Not only is the second one not an attack thing, it's double attack again. The wind, so like this is definitely my least favorite out of all of them. I cannot imagine running this, but your mileage might vary. This, this this thing is just the least exciting one. So fire, big winner out of these. Water, also, you know, winner. Their weapon's good. Earth is alright, um, mostly for like mid-game grids. Wind is just, I don't know, I would go so far as wind's just bad. Other thing that they've added since the original time I did a video on this, um, they added proud modes. Um, I already cleared them during the stream, um, but the way you unlock these is you have to one turn kill these bosses. So for example, if you can one turn clear uh, Quinlong, Quinlong here, uh, then you will unlock proud mode Quinlong. And once you've unlocked, I believe, all of the proud modes for the four elements, it unlocks proud plus, which is Huanglong and Quillen. Considerably harder fight than these first four. Um, but this one gets you an Omega Quillen and Huanglong Anima, so definitely super worth doing if you can handle it. Um, these are solo fights, so you don't have to be pretty tough um, to actually be able to clear all of them. Uh, but if you can, worth it. Super worth it. They give you they all give you seals, they give you really good XP and rewards. Just super worth it. Other things to talk about, I didn't know this before, but I don't know if they always have this, but there's maniacs now for um for each of the actually I think these might share a cooldown. Yeah, they share a cooldown. There's maniacs now for each of the showdowns. Um you can do two of them total a day, and when you do one of them, it will trigger the boss for that element. So let me just do one real quick. Um, and to show you what I mean. And so it's definitely worth doing uh, these like to do it's definitely worth doing two of these a day just because it'll trigger the boss twice. So you do one of these, you do the boss, you do one of these, you do the boss. It's a lot of free pendants and, and a lot less time than it normally takes. Uh, so that's definitely a worthwhile uh, activity for you to do. Uh, 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 just want to kill these idiots fast. Ugh, oh, fuck it. We'll do that. Just die. Get out of here. Didn't actually mean to, to Ugi there, but you know, it's fine. Okay, so onwards. So what I'm talking about is actually, ah, uh, should have. I kind of want to link Silva just so I can like do ridiculous damage, but it's fine. Don't need to link Silva. Silva does ridiculous damage without being linked to Summer Drea. I think she like Oogies for like 7 million or something. Like something absurd uh, if she's linked to Summer Drea. You can sell a big dick. Okay, anyway, so now that thing's dead. So a thousand symbols, but that's the big thing. It kicks off the boss. Um, normally it takes about, I want to say like six or seven um, of these fights to trigger the boss. So being able to trigger the maniac, the boss off the maniacs twice a day, definitely will speed things up for you. Uh, let's see. I think that covers pretty much all the major points. This isn't new, but um, this rising beast trials. 
Uh, you can spend seals to challenge these guys, and then they have materials that you will need in order to uh, buy upgrades for each of the... Let's look at that real quick. Each of the... the the Zukwe Katana, the Baihu Fist, uh, the Quinglong Spear, and the Water Hammer, the Zanwu Hammer. Um, each of those have upgrades you can buy. They're under, I think, Upgraders? No, not Upgraders. What the hell are they? Beast Weapons? Consumables. Ciphers. There we go. Um, these ciphers each give an extra effect to the, the weapon. Um, the one that's most relevant for pretty much anybody is all of them have a damage cap up you can get uh, if you add it to a weapon. Uh, fire has, I think, an HP up, which is kind of nice, um, but mostly um, you care about the damage cap ups. Uh, these are the Jadeites you need. These are from those Rising Beast Trials. Rising Beast Trials, worth noting, are one-on-one -on -one fights. You can't request help from them, and they have elemental resist. So you can't go in as an off element or you'll probably get destroyed. Um, though on that topic, uh, if I hadn't mentioned this before, um, if you're trying to unlock the proud modes and you're having trouble with one of the elements, so let's say you have a weak fire team so you can't clear Quinlong in one turn, uh, you can, these don't have elemental resistance. So you can go in as like say a dark team um, and like uh, use a dark team or a light team, or even like a water, you know, some team that, like any team that you have that's strong to do your one turn kills. You have to be a little bit stronger since you're not getting a mental bonus, but honestly, like these guys aren't that hard. So like, uh, if I do this on my dark team, it would totally count for being a one turn kill. So keep that in mind you're struggling a little bit. And then I will end things up by doing the boss real fast, uh, just to show you how much you get from that. Please. Play through the animations here, beat the shit out of this guy. And yeah, so that would count as a, a proud mode unlocked because it's a one turn kill, even though it's not with the proper element for that uh, particular boss. So, uh, these big guys, so that was worth like what, like 500, I didn't even look, 500 pendants or something? These guys are worth like around 8,000, 9,000 pendants. So, these, like, summoning these guys is gonna be your best bet for. Um, uh, farming pendants, and you're gonna need a shit ton of pendants. So, uh, yeah, they're not that hard. They recently buffed these guys to make them a little bit stronger. Uh, honestly, I still think they're not that hard, but um, if you have trouble, you can call back up. Uh, you get more pendants the more damage you do. Um, I think if you get 50% on it, then you'll get full pendants, so uh, try to get to 50% if you're having trouble. Um, and then call for help. But if you call for help before that, no shame. Like definitely, like uh, these guys uh, for like the game grids definitely can be a challenge. So don't don't sweat don't sweat soloing them too much. You're still gonna get a shit ton of pendants if you have any level of contribution. And then we we'll just beat the shit out of this guy. My Athena is under level. She's like level sixty, but I'm bringing her because reason. I actually didn't give Athena enough credit um, before. Like when I initially looked at her, she looked alright, but like now that I play her a bit, she's actually quite good. And she's a spear character, so she fits in the spear meta, which is like Anila, well it's 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 this team. <laughs> it's Anila, Shiva, Athena. Uh, like OG Fire fucking Zeta would be on this team, except for Where's her 5-star uncap? She was rumored to get 5-star uncap at the beginning of the year, and now we're midway through summer, and she still hasn't got her 5-star uncap. When will justice- when will there be justice for Zeta, I say? Other interesting thing about this team, uh, Anila has delay, Athena has delay, Michael, the summon has delay. If you're using Spartan, 
for like the fourth spear character, Spartan Shield throws away, and then if you're using Erictonius as a main hand, the Athena Spear. That's five delays. Like, you can probably like chain delays so the boss can never get anything off. If you put Matera, I think, Fire Matera in the front row, I think she has a delay also, plus a charm. Like, I think legitimately, like, a build that makes it so the boss never oogies outside of a, um, outside of a trigger could be pretty fun to play. That's essentially kind of what I ended up doing for the Proving Ground, the Fire Proving Grounds, if you ever watched that video a while back. You chill, this guy. I'm excited by it, about the Fire United fight, just because I, I enjoy playing Fire these days, uh, which is weird. Fire used to be feel kind of eh to me, but like after Exaba became a thing, and then Anila got her five star, and then Shiva came out, like Fire has been pretty good. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a second fully uncapped Exaba before then. We'll see. I think I need a couple more Damascus. Or I can get Crimson Finger. That'll take less Damascus. Since I have two Crimson Fingers. Don't know. I'm not a fan of Stamina D. But maybe. Did you just paralyze me? The fuck? Rude. Also, not gonna save you. I can't believe you paralyzed my characters, it's fucking gross. Oh, Athena's counterattack still triggers even if she's paralyzed, that's cool. Athena's just really solid, I like her. Plus she's cute, and the truly important part. Get this idiot. Yay! So let's look at how many uh, pendants we get. And it's... Yeah, about 9,000 pendants. So definitely you want a lot of pendants. Charge these bosses up by doing your um, your your beast battles or do your your two maniacs a day uh, to charge the boss up. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's probably going to be your best bet for getting a lot of pendants. Uh, I will get into Quillen and Huanglong a little bit more in another video, I think, since they're a more advanced topic. Um, we'll talk about like trains and whatnot. Um, if you want to see me do all, if like, if you want to see what the proud modes look like, uh, I've got another video on the channel of me doing all of the proud modes during a stream, including Proud Plus, so you can check that out there. Uh, but until next time, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, uh, check out my Patreon, check out my Discord if you want to come hang out. It's all in the comment down below, and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya!